Would you like to know how to rapidly and easily increase case acceptance of your best recommendations for best option care? Well, stay tuned because that's exactly what we're going to cover today. What you were taught about case acceptance, both in dental school and in all the CE courses, it was just wrong. Now, it wasn't entirely wrong. They taught you the right stuff, but they left out the most important piece, the most important piece of the puzzle. They taught us problem, and that would be the um, diagnosis, and solution. Solution would be the treatment plan. So you have this problem, here's what I recommend you do. So they taught us problem, solution. Well, one of my mentors in business uh, 30-something years ago said to me, Tom, he said, in dentistry, you guys are missing the most important piece. Write this down. It should be problem, agitate, solution. Not problem, solution. It should be problem, agitate, solution. Now, you guys know that people buy things based on emotion, not based on logic or reason. They use logic or reason to back up their choice. So it's important that they understand the logical, irrational reasons for doing whatever you're recommending. But it falls far short of getting them to actually accept the care, pay out of pocket. You know, insurance isn't going to cover squat. So problem, agitate, solution. So what is agitate? Well, to achieve the patient really owning the problem, and not just owning the problem, but wanting to take action and wanting to actually schedule before they walk out today, explain to them, and write this down because this is where the rubber meets the road, explain to your patients the potential consequences of not taking action now. And underline the word now. Explain to your patients the potential consequences of not taking action right now. Now, that isn't even enough. That's, that's, that's the correct, that's the piece that's missing. But you need to do that in three different verticals or three different areas. Well, what would the three different areas be? The first one would be, if we don't take action, if you don't take action now, here are the potential treatments. So you would talk about the treatments, you would talk about the amount of time, how many visits, and you would talk about the money. So you want to compare, if we take care of it now, Here's the treatment we would do. Here's how long it would take. Here's what it would cost. If you don't take care of it now, and by the way, you got to be honest with the patient. Um, we're going to be talking today about a um, just one example. You could do this with anything non-elective. You know, elective would be cosmetic and that kind of stuff, but for everything non-elective, for needed care to keep their health in good shape, um, you want to use the potential consequences of not taking action now in all three verticals, but you need to be honest with the patient but we're going to be talking today about the fractured tooth, where the patient has no symptoms, but we can see a clear fracture line going from the DO, the small DO amalgam that's been there for 30 years that has wide open margins, and it goes right through the mesial marginal ridge. And you know that if you take a burr to that DO amalgam and you didn't tell the patient ahead of time, if you told the patient this is going to be a you know, 30 minute um, replacement filling, 30 minute replacement filling with a um, $30 copay, you know, I'm just making it up, but you're, you're in for some real horror because the moment you take a, a bird of that DO amalgam, the tooth is going to split. You're going to lose probably the, the mesial um, buckle, if not the mesial buckle and the mesial lingual cusps. And uh, you got to be ready to do a buildup and crown that day. Uh, and the patient has to be ready um, financially. In fact, that's, that's got to be the plan. You got to be honest with the patient about the timing though. And here's what I would say to the patient. Mrs. Jones, I can't tell you if this tooth is going to fracture in a year, a month, a week, a day. There's no way for me to predict that. I've been doing this long enough. I can tell you the tooth is going to fracture. But you know, when that happens, no way to tell. What I can tell you that it is that if we don't take care of it immediately, here are some of the things that I know to be true about what could and probably will happen. So I would case note that I told them this. I would case note how specifically I said that so that it's clear that I didn't say when it's going to happen. I don't know. I didn't say it's 100% guaranteed to happen. I simply said, based on what I know from my experience over the years and looking at what I see, this is what is most likely to happen. And my recommendation would be to take care of this right now. Okay, so let's, in talking to this asymptomatic patient, by the way, asymptomatic patients think everything's just fine. They come in. You know, any concerns, any complaint, any, anything bothering you? Oh, no, no. Anything you want me to take a look at? No, everything's just great. I think I just need a cleaning and a checkup. Well, cheers to that. You look in their mouth and you know what they need. And it ain't just a cleaning and a checkup. 
All right, so you've got this asymptomatic patient. If you just did problem solution, it would look like this. You have a fracture going from the old silver filling up through the tooth, and um, what I would recommend that we do is a buildup, which is a very strong kind of rebuilding the inside, and then a cap or a crown, which makes it nice and solid on the outside. That's what we were basically taught was problem solution. Um, so what's the agitate step? Well, again, we're going to do it just for this one area, which would be for um, the visible fracture where you know that that tooth is fractured, but the patient had no idea. Um, we're going to do it just for that one. But you want to sit down with your team and you want to brainstorm. I would do a one or two or three. We did this with our Freedom Summit coaching members. It was a 90-minute session, uh, one, one evening webinar. And we went through every different thing you can imagine, you know, eight or 10 or 12 different uh, scenarios, not just fractures, but all sorts of other things. I would recommend that you do the same with your team and brainstorm what are the things we should tell our patients when we see X? What are the potential consequences of not taking action? What's the treatment needed? How many visits would it take? That's time away from family. That's time away from work. Um, and also what would it cost? What would the difference in cost be? All right, so for the uh, case of the fracture. So Mrs. Jones, I can't tell you whether that tooth is, is already in need of a root canal. Always use the word root canal uh, if you're talking about a tooth like this because patients don't want root canals and you want to get them emotionally connected to the taking care of this now. Uh, so I can't promise you that it doesn't need a root canal. And, and, and in fact, I'm going to kind of come out of roll for a second. I, I normally would actually just probably treatment plan that one for the root canal to build up and the crown. Um, that's up to you. I mean, whatever you feel is best in your hands, that, that's yours. But I often would just do that. And then if at, when I got to the point of rebuilding it, if it didn't need the root canal, at the end of the visit, I would you know, give them that money back or tell them that we were taking that off because we didn't end up doing the root canal. They would rather hear that then you planned on a buildup and a crown, but then you added a root canal in the middle of the procedure. That's, that's a quick aside, but you still want to use the word root canal. So I can't promise you at this point that it doesn't need a root canal. Your best shot at not needing a root canal would be to take care of this immediately. Um, if that tooth were to fracture up through the roots, and it will fracture at some point, if it fractured up through the roots and into the bone, write that down. If your tooth fractures up through the roots and into the bone, we're going to have to take it out. If it fractures in through the, to the bone and we have a difficult extraction, there's a likelihood also of needing to do bone graft surgery. Now, don't just say we're going to add some bone. Tell them it's surgery. Use the word surgery. So use the word root canal. Use the word surgery because that's what it is. It's bone graft surgery. If we do need to do bone grafting surgery in order to give you some place to really be able to put that implant so you've got a replacement tooth, if it's a back tooth, you don't want to lose your chewing. If it's a front tooth, you don't want to have a missing tooth in the front. So either way, the implant, but but if we need to do that surgery, then we need to cover it up and we'll probably leave that for somewhere between, let's say, four and six months so it can become nice and solid with the rest of the bone. Then we're going to do an, an uncovery surgery to get in there and then place the implant into the uh, the newly healed bone. Then we're going to cover that up, let that heal in for a bit. Uh, we're going to put a little cap on there and another, and then you can figure out whatever the timing is for you for that area, depending on the bone and the part of the mouth. Uh, but then you tell the patient after X number of you know, weeks or months, we're going to go back in there and we're going to open that up. And then we're going to put a, an abutment in. Or we're going to take scans and, and or impressions, however you happen to do it. Uh, and then we're going to have you back and one or two more visits. We'll have the crown on there. So if you think about what I just said to the patient, now it took me maybe two minutes. You can do this in two minutes, maybe three, but in that two or three minutes will be all the difference for your case acceptance. That was just the treatments, but it also, actually, that was a combination of the treatments. So look at all these additions. Instead of a buildup and crown in one or two visits, one if you're doing you know, CAD CAM and um, uh, two if you're, if you're taking a scan or an impression and having it come back from a lab. So one or two visits, buildup and crown versus, and I'm not going to go repeat all the different treatments I just said, but that's anywhere from six to eight visits. Six or seven would be pretty typical for everything I just described. So that's six or six, that's three times as many visits. Now, how about the fee? Well, we can't discuss fees here, so I'm just going to use a, a thousand or fifteen hundred. Again, these aren't real fees for whatever it is you build up your crown, maybe your root canal, whatever whatever you recommend there, recommend there. But we're talking about something that's very very tiny. Um, it's not tiny to the patient, but but it is very very small in comparison. Let's say it's um, I don't know. Let, let let's say it's a thousand dollars just for an easy round number, and let's say it's 
six or seven thousand dollars for all of those other visits and surgeries and everything I just described, you got to let the patient know that those are the that's the potential consequence of not taking action right now. So, again, I would recommend doing this um, with your team for all the different types of things. When you and your team tell your patients about the potential consequence of not taking action now, and again, underline now, you'll see your case acceptance skyrocketing. And, and this is just one of a long list of really simple strategies that you could deploy to safely and predictably begin to reduce your dependence on PPOs. Because once you see case acceptance going up, once you have patients paying out of pocket for better care, once they appreciate the need for that care and they trust you to do that care, you'll find your ability to begin to safely reduce your dependence on PPOs um, for a number of reasons. But one is because you're doing more better care uh, and, and you don't need to see quite as many patients when you're doing that. Um, or you could grow and add you know, associates and do more better care on more patients. And I know that's probably not good grammar, but you get it. Now, your local colleagues will tell you, oh, you can't reduce, you can't reduce and especially you can't eliminate PPOs, not in our area. Tom, you didn't understand. We're in and then they'll, they'll name, name the city. We're in this crazy urban area. We're in New York. We're in Detroit. We're in uh, Los Angeles, wherever you are. It doesn't matter where you are. It's being done all over the country. I did it in my two practices. Got out of the PPOs 100% in my Framingham office and about 95% in my dad's office when he was uh, dying of cancer and I had to take that over to help my mom out. Um, so did it in both of those in some pretty tough areas. Um, so, you know, they'll, they'll tell you this. They'll tell you you can't get out because they don't know how. If they knew how, they would be doing it themselves, but they have no idea. So um, after I did drop 100% and went 100% fee-for-service in Framingham, and then I get about 95% in the Worcester practice, dropped 13 of his 15 PPOs in, in less than two years, for the last 23 years, that's exactly what I've been helping other dentists to do is to safely and reliably and predictably reduce dependence on PPOs. Um, what I would recommend would be if you would like to find out if we might be able to help you and we probably can help you rapidly increase revenue. Uh, that we know we can do. We can, we can easily help you rapidly increase revenue. But then you'll be in a better position to financial strength to begin to safely drop those PPOs. We'll help you to map out a plan. How would you increase revenue? What are the four different critical pillar areas that I did in both of my practices and that we've worked with hundreds and hundreds of offices over the years? What are those four areas? And it's specific to your practice. So we'll help you to map out a plan that is specific to your practice. And you don't have to go 100% fee for service. Maybe you just want to safely drop one or two PPOs. Maybe there's a couple that you really don't like at all and you, you just soon be done with those. Or maybe you do want to go 100% fee for service, uh, as I did. Just type liberation and my team will get back to you and they will help you to um, schedule. You hop on a, a super short call. It's called a PPO reduction call. It's 10 minutes, promises absolutely nothing to sell on that call. Basically, that call is just to see, is there enough of a fit that we believe that we might be able to help you? Uh, and then you would schedule a 60-minute break breakthrough call where you'll go in really deep and map everything out. Um, now, if you want to skip to the front of the line, um, see if I can find a link here that you guys could use. Um, yeah, so I'm going to drop a link into the chat here. So I'm going to do that through the magic of technology. Um, <laughs> We'll drop that in there. So you could actually just use that link if you wanted to skip to the front of the line and do it yourself. So if you would like to hop on your own, maybe 10 minute complimentary PPO reduction call, you can just use that link and uh, schedule it for yourself. Uh, if you want some help scheduling it, uh, then you would just um, type liberation uh, into the comments below and, and we'll make sure that my staff gets back to you. So. Guys, thank you so much for being part of our PPO exit movement. Have an amazing weekend. And remember, you are only one gem away. Take care. Enjoy.